Hi everyone, Brianna Dignard here and welcome back to my channel and welcome to my channel if you're new here. Uh, we're about, I guess, three quarters of the way through March, which means we are three quarters of the way through our 31 days of Women Scientists Initiative. And if you're new here, that is where I have been every single day dressing in an outfit inspired by a women scientist and uploading that as like a little short reel on YouTube and Instagram, just highlighting that women scientist wearing an outfit inspired by them and just sharing the women scientist love uh, in honor of Women's History Month. And I've been having a lot of fun with it. Also tired. <laughs> it's a lot of work to produce video content every single morning, but it is a lot of fun and I'm glad that you guys seem to be enjoying it. Um, and thank you so much for watching those videos. So on Tuesdays for the month of March, I've been posting the longer format videos of whatever the outfit has been for that day and just a little bit of background behind how I created some of these outfits. Cause I would say probably at least like 50% of the outfits you see me wearing every day, I have made myself. Um, <laughs> so today's outfit is inspired by Marie Tharp, uh, who I have talked a little bit about on this channel. So here in a second, I'll share a little bit of brief background about Marie Tharp's life. I'll show you how I made the outfit that I'm wearing to be inspired by Marie Tharp today. And I'll talk to you more about ocean floor mapping and tectonic plate theory. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> All right, I just want to give you guys a little bit of background on Marie Tharp, and if you're interested in hearing more about her life story, go check out my previous video I made about her life. So Marie Tharp was a cartographer assistant, I guess, in the mid 50s and 60s, because as a woman, she was unable to actually go collect her own data or have her own position. She could only work as kind of an assistant to other men in the field trying to get their degrees. So she worked mostly with a student and then eventual PH, completed PhD, Bruce Heason, and Bruce would collect all of these map points and all of this data on the ocean floor using sonar. And Marie Tharp would actually be the one who collect, took all that data and analyzed it and plotted it and generated the maps. So in 1957, Bruce Heason and Marie Tharp were able to publish the first ever map of the Atlantic seafloor. Isn't that crazy that we didn't know like what the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean looked like until like the mid 1950s. Anyhow, and this um, map showed a ridge in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, now called the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, which provided evidence for seafloor spreading, which then provided support for the theory of tectonic plates, which was a really sketchy theory at best at the time. And I'll talk more about that later in this video. Um, but Marie Tharp kind of came to Bruce Heason with this idea of, hey, this Mid-Atlantic Ridge is proving seafloor spreading. And Bruce Heason report, responded by calling her research girl talk and I now want to direct you to probably my best like 30 seconds of footage I have made on this entire channel of my proposed understanding of how this conversation would have gone down. Hey girls, what you talking about in here? Oh, you know, just talking about girl talk and stuff. Like, like some scientific theories. Marie's telling me about all of her data. Go on, tell them. Yeah, I was just saying that I think the notches in my data represent the fact that there's a rift in the middle of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Um, and that would really prove the fact that continental drift theory by Alfred Wegener is correct. Oh, yeah, I guess, yeah, girl stuff. Ah, oh, that video still makes me crack up. I honestly think it's the best thing I've created on this channel. Um, but anyhow, that's a little bit about Marie Tharp's life. And now I'm going to turn you again over to voiceover Brianna as I work on this outfit for Marie Tharp and tell you more about ocean floor mapping and tectonic plate theory. So let's go do that. Hi guys, it's voiceover Brianna here, and I'm going to share some more information with you about sonar, mapping the ocean floor, and tectonic plate theory. But before I do that, I realized I never actually shared what pattern I was using or what my goal here was. Um, but I found this really cool antique map looking fabric at Joann's that I wanted to use because, you know, maps mapping the ocean floor went together. And I kind of went with a long sleeve shirt dress material. And then because... And because I got out of hand with this project as usual, I ended up also making a brown vest to go over it, kind of like a vintage inspired 
ocean explorer outfit i'm not even sure <laughs> we'll see how it turns out so we're working on the dress right now and i didn't show any footage of the vest but you'll see all the footage in the map dress but anyhow um since the dawn of time i think people have always loved making maps for thousands of years people have been making maps they weren't always accurate but they had maps um but only since about the 1800s have people been more successful at trying to figure out how to actually map the ocean floor which as you can imagine it's very far and very deep and very big and hard to map if you don't have advanced enough technology. So before technology actually got advanced enough to map the ocean floor, cartographers really just liked putting sea monsters around the ocean because they didn't have a freaking clue of what was going on there. So in by the about the 1800s, people started using weighted ropes to estimate depths and map harbors. But since the average seafloor depth is 2.2 miles, there are some limitations to this method. So in a shallower area, they could toss down a known length of weighted rope, see how far until it hit the bottom, and then measure that distance and they can map it. But it's really hard to get a weighted rope that is 2.2 miles long. Um, so they could only map certain areas of water. However, when sonar was invented in the 1920s, seafloor mapping became a lot more attainable. So sonar, which is short for sound navigation and ranging, it's almost like the sound version of those weighted ropes that early sailors would drop into harbors. So whereas those early sailors would drop a weighted ro rope and when it hit the bottom, they would measure that distance, sonar systems instead emit a ping of sound and it travels until it hits something and when that sound hits something it travels back to a receiver that can record it the time between the signal sent and signal received allows an estimation of depth to be obtained the longer it takes for the sound to hit something and travel back the deeper that area is this method is specifically called active sonar because it is actively sending out a signal and waiting to hear it back However, there is also passive sonar, which doesn't put out its own signal, but rather just detects sonar signals from nearby objects like ships, submarines, or even whales. That's right, whales also use sonar underwater, which is part of the way we got the inspiration to use sonar on our ships. By the 1960s, multi-beam sonar became a thing, which produced a signal of multiple sound waves in a fan-shaped pattern to map a broader area. So this is versus what they were using before, which is just one single little ping of sound in one direction, hits, comes back. Now they have multiple beams that can spread out in a fan-shaped pattern and get a broader area. These systems are used to generate high resolution maps of the ocean floor, but this is a very expensive and slow process. So most ocean maps actually use a mix of low and high resolution data to create useful data at a lower cost and a shorter time commitment. Cause definitely in science, time is money. Uh, as of 2022, actually only a bit more than 23% of the ocean floor has been mapped in high resolution. So it was crazy to me that it wasn't even until the 1950s that Marie Tharp completed the first map of the Atlantic Ocean, but even in today's scientific community, culture, whatever, uh, we still only have 23% of the ocean floor mapped out in high resolution. That's crazy. Uh, so pivoting just a little bit, that was a lot of information about sonar. We also have, um, so Marie Tharp using the sonar to map the Atlantic Ocean is where they found the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, and this was a really important discovery. The appropriately named Mid-Atlantic Ridge is an outer underwater mountain range. Guess what? Guess where it is? Oh my gosh, it's in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. So yes, scientists named something called the Mid-Atlantic Ridge after something that was a ridge in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. I love scientists when they name things. Uh, from the Mid-Atlantic Ridge came the theory of sea spore sea spore sea floor spreading which was where magma was coming up from underneath the earth's crust and forcing the sea floor apart so if you remember any like drawing of like the earth you had to probably do in like a middle school the earth is covered by a solid crust underneath that crust is the mantle which is full of molten lava molten magma and then you have the outer core and the inner core so the crust is actually fairly thin and if there are cracks in it then magma from the mantle can come up and so that is the idea is that this mid-atlantic ridge had a basically a crack in the ocean in the earth's crust and coming up from underneath it was magma and when you have something coming up between a crack it's forcing the two sides of that crack apart it's called seafloor spreading so this became 
a proposed mechanism for the previously proposed uh, theory of continental drift, which was proposed by the scientist Alfred Wegener. And the theory of continental drift that was these continents are just kind of slips that in around um, was actually really the precursor to tectonic plates, which is the theory we accept today. Scientists didn't really accept uh, Alfred Wegener's theory of continental drift because they were like, how the heck does it work? All right, you have this idea. Anybody can toss out an idea in science, but until you prove an example of how this works or a mechanism by which this works, we ain't gonna believe you. Um, so the discovery of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge by Marie Tharp and this idea of seafloor spreading provided a mechanism for which continental drift would occur. And so like I mentioned, this was the precursor to kind of tectonic plates, which is this idea that the continents are all located on broken up pieces of the Earth's crust, and they're sliding around on the molten mantle of the Earth. So that's why the continents overall over a long period of time actually move. And this is how we have the formation of mountain ranges as uh, the Earth's crust and as the tectonic plates push and pull against each other. This is why we have earthquakes is the tectonic plates like rub up against each other and start to cause earthquakes, um, which is why a lot of earthquakes will appear on, will occur on boundaries between the tectonic plates, tectonic plates goodness and why we also have volcanoes because if there is a crack in the earth's crust then like i said magma from the mantle can come up and turn into lava as it erupts so from all this information i just shared we can see the advancement of thousands of years of technology that all led up to the proposal and support for the theory of tectonic plates which again explains a lot of geological activity that occurs on the earth today so first of all we had to have maps but we didn't have any technology for actually mapping the ocean floor and then we came up with sonar we could start to map the ocean floor then marie tharp was able to publish that first map of the ocean floor detect the mid-atlantic ridge see and propose that it was evidence of seafloor spreading and even go as far as to say hey this is seafloor spreading and this is support for alfred wegner's theory of continental drift which would then develop into tectonic plate theory so oftentimes discoveries in science um, can seem very isolated but they actually all connect together for a bigger picture that all relies on one another. So that key turning point for determining how tectonic plate theory would work would be Marie Tharp using sonar to detect the Mid-Atlantic Ridge and taking that one step further and saying, hey guys, this is seafloor spreading, it's not girl talk, and it's proving the entire way the earth system works. And it's gonna change everyone's view of how the earth is constructed. So with all of that information, let's go see how that outfit turned out. dress is all done with the vest and i think it turned out super cute and i absolutely love today's outfit and the little earrings and necklace are just such a good addition to this kind of vintage world traveler map thing theme i got going on um so i hope you enjoyed today's video learning a little bit more about sonar and actually mapping the ocean floor which is what today's uh science of the scientist of the day will read tharp um, did. She was the first person to map the ocean floor in the 19 or the Atlantic floor in the 1950s. And I hope you enjoyed learning a brief, brief highlight of her life. And if you want to go learn more about her, go check out my previous video I did on her life. Um, and today's fun fact that we're going to rate on a scale of 1 to 10 in the comments below is that it is estimated that it would take one ship 1,000 years to map the ocean floor at all of its steps. That is a very long time. The ocean is gigantic. So please rate that fun fact on a scale of one to 10 in the comments below. Like this video, subscribe to my channel. Remember to keep paying attention for those little women scientist inspired outfits every single day of March. Uh, follow me on Instagram and keep it sciencey.